Evening, François. So, Douglas, uh, these two journalists uh, basically were documenting what was going on in Rock Island State. D- doing their job. Um, we have seen a steady erosion of press freedoms. There had been an opening up in Myanmar over the past several years. It doesn't mean they were a a land of press freedom and free expression, far from it. But since 2012, what we have seen, we saw a landmark law pass which sort of eliminated pre-publication censorship. And since then, we had seen journalists getting at least a modicum of more access, uh, greater latitude in being able to report on a lot of issues across society. The sensitive, the tripwire, if you will, issues have always been reporting on the government and the military junta itself and anything, especially negative coverage, but even more sensitive to that than that are the ethnic tensions and the sectarian conflicts in the country, and none more sensitive than the Rohingya Muslim slash Buddhist slash army uh, conflict and the violence, the arson, the looting, and the massacres that have been documented, wide, widely documented. That has been sort of the no-go for the military junta when it comes to press freedom. And that is really what's happening in this case. You know, the British ambassador to Myanmar called this a hammer blow to the rule of law. Hmm. But you could take a step back and you could say it's also a blow, a major setback for anyone who's been following and hoping for greater press freedoms and this transition to democracy that we've been seeing. Remember when Barack Obama visited in November 2012, a lot of hopes for this country. You could still say there are hopes, but when it comes to press freedom right now, these journalists cross a line. And remember, these were Reuters journalists, international journalists, not to mention what they do to domestic journalists. The fact that these international journalists with such an international outcry and so many eyes watching this story, that they were subjected to a prison sentence, it shows just how sensitive this issue is. You cannot report on military atrocities if you're a journalist. In Myanmar. When uh, there was that opening up uh, in Myanmar and those elections, those unprecedented elections, we knew back then that uh, there were uh, certain um, ministries, certain authorities where the military was not going to hand over the reins. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, look, we, we've had, essentially, we've had uh, 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 a dual structure in Myanmar in the government since 2015. You'll remember that was the year that the National League for Democracy, Aung San Suu Kyi's pro-democracy movement, swept to power in landslide parliamentary elections. Great hopes that after years, over a decade of house arrest at the hands of this military junta, now she was essentially not just sharing power with them, but in, in essence, she was supposed to be able to call the shots. We have not seen that by any way, shape, or form. Far from calling the shots, a lot of speculation has been that this former Nobel Peace Prize winner, Aung San Suu Kyi, has been really under the uh, the military junta's thumb. And in order to sort of keep her power and keep sort of the perquisites that she has, she's had to sort of, if not do their bidding, at least turn a blind eye to a lot of the atrocities of this army that, like I said, have been documented. But it perhaps goes further than that. People have said, well, Aung San Suu Kyi, remember, people have been asking some to strip her of her Nobel Peace Prize, something the Nobel Peace Prize Committee said, we can't do that, that can't be done. But people are saying, might she now? Given the attention this international case, this is a real sort of litmus test for her. Might she now break her silence on the whole Rohingya crisis? Because so far she has remained really silent, has been heavily criticized for it. Might she step forward? Might she be able to intervene, bring her power or influence to bear with the military hunter in trying to secure the release of these two journalists who were framed essentially uh, in this in this trial, in this whole uh, in these arrests? That's the open question. My hunch, my instinct, based on what we know of what she said on the public record is she's not just under the military junta's thumb, Francois. She believes, because she said it, that the Rohingya are a real national security threat to the country, Mm. that they are terrorists. So in a sense, you could say she's buying into the army and the military junta's narrative when it comes to the Rohingyas. If I were a betting man, I wouldn't put my money on Aung San Suu Kyi stepping forward to intervene. And there's been, as far as you know, no statement from her. Not yet. Since... uh... Not since the arrest. But then again, it's been less than a day. But no, nothing today so far that I've seen. All right, Douglas Herbert, many